Life is busy. Disciple making is slow, but we can find rest and hope in Jesus. Welcome to 419 Moment of Encouragement, created to bring you short messages, scriptures, testimonies, and prayers to keep us focused on the kingdom of God and His promises. Hello, and welcome to this episode of A Moment of Encouragement. My name is Beth Laurie, and I'm your guide. Today, I wanted to come on and share a little about my story, my testimony, and also really encourage you guys to ask for the things that you need. We have a good father, and he wants to meet us where we're at. And I learned that along the way. But I grew up in a loving home. Uh, My mother, excuse me, specifically uh, taught me about Jesus and who he was and read Bible stories to me. Uh, She was a big influence, and uh, she took us to church regularly. Uh, We uh, had a loving home. My father taught Sunday school some, and my mother helped in the youth group. I went through confirmation at age 12, and that is where I met Jesus, sitting in our pastor's office, learning how much Jesus loved me and how he died for me, and I accepted him as my Savior at age 12. And after that, I remember so many wonderful days of uh, coming home from school and putting on some praise music and talking to Jesus like he was my best friend. And then, sadly, as some do, um, I started drifting away from Jesus in my teenage years. I remember being tempted by the world and the lies that uh, the enemy offered. I wanted fun and the flashy things that the world was offering. It looked uh Good, And so those were the things I started to pursue. Um, I went to college and I was able to be a good student, uh, but I was definitely uh, living my life uh, my way. I prayed when I needed help from the Lord for a test, but it was not a relationship. I was um, more using the Lord like a you would a genie. And um, then I got older and... Um, eventually got married, and I remember when my first daughter was born, I had been going back to church some, but still not fully seeking, and I remember sitting in the back uh, row, standing up with her at the old campus of South, um, South Campus of Mount Pisgah, and holding her and saying, Lord, I'm going to need some help. But still trying to do things my way and manage life. And and our other daughter was born. And eventually life got really hard. If I be honest, I was selfish. I was young. I was trying to still do everything my way. My husband and I were having marital problems. We we were fighting. We were uh, in debt. And uh, it was just difficult. And I remember... um, the the word divorce came up in a conversation, and I did not want that. I wanted uh, to stay married to my husband, and I wanted to figure out how to do this differently. So I got down on my knees in my bedroom, and I said, Lord, I have lived my life my way, and it has not worked, and I want to live my life your way. And I asked him to be my Lord and not just my Savior, but my Lord, and that I would align my life to Him. And I started uh, faithfully coming to church and sitting on the back row and crying because every message was what my soul needed. And um, I needed to find community in the church, but I did not have that at the time. And it was large and it was easy to disappear in the back row. A friend encouraged me to find someone. And after a little struggle. I got the name of a woman named Penny and um, asked if she could call me. And I think she wanted, thought maybe I wanted to serve or something. And she called me and I was bold. And I just poured out my heart and I said, I don't know what it means to live for Jesus, but I want to learn. And I need someone to show me, not to tell me or not to Give me a book, but to show me, how do you do this? What does it look like to have Jesus to be your best friend? Um, And she did that. Her response to me was, let's have coffee. 
And uh, we did. We met regularly, and she listened to me, and she encouraged me, and she prayed for me. She gave me scriptures to read. She started discipling me, showing me how to find Jesus and fall in love with him. She took me to Bible studies. She sent me on walk to Emmaus. She poured into me week after week. Where she went to serve, she invited me to come along, and I learned how to serve. She shared her life with me, and her life was a representation of Christ. I still get tears in my eyes today because it's a beautiful love, the love of Christ. Through that experience, uh, my life was transformed. And I learned what it meant to live for Jesus, to be all in, to say, yes, Lord, and seek him. He saved my marriage. He made me a better mom. We got out of debt. He aligned our life um, biblically with his. And the blessings came from that more than I could share on this podcast. And I'm so grateful for that and grateful for him and how he works in our life. But the one part of the story I wanted you guys to take away today was the part about being vulnerable and saying what you need. I didn't know this woman. I didn't know if she could help me. I didn't even know what I was really fully needing. I didn't know I needed discipleship. That's what happens after lordship. But she came in my life and that was ordained by God. And because I was vulnerable and didn't just say, hey, can you like um, tell me which Bible study I should go to? I just said, I need to know Jesus intimately. I want that. I want more of him. But I don't even know what that looks like and how to get to him. And she shared in the most loving way. And so my encouragement for you today, dear friends, is this. Tell God what you need. Tell another trusted person what you need. He's a good father. Trust that he will provide and answer. He gives us everything we need when we seek him with all our heart. It is good to tell him and ask him to meet us right where we're at. You will be blessed more than you could ever imagine. Join us next time as we stay faithful and find joy in our journey with Jesus.